Okay, well, let's go and get started today. Uh, this is class 12 uh, for networking and communication. And today we're going to be talking about information encoding. And essentially what information encoding is, uh, let's take a look at that. So that if you remember back to that diagram from all the way back from class one, we kind of had this idea of you have a source, you have a destination, and then we have this process in the middle that involves this channel where we want to push information through from the source to the destination. And now imagine that we want to get that information, some information through that system from source to destination. And imagine we want to send some document. So we have some document that's over here and we want it to go through this entire system and then show up uh, at the destination on the other end. So how do we encode the information to allow that transfer? And to make it a little more clear what we're talking about as far as encoding that, we're not talking about how do we put it on the channel or how do we modulate it? How do we put the bits on here? How do we take the bits off? We're talking about something a little bit broader than that. We're talking about how do we make sure that this thing here gets over to here? In other words, how do we know when the information starts? How do we know what's part of the document? How do we request, hey, are you over there? Yeah, I'm here. Here's the first piece of information. Uh, here's what the letters look like. Here's where I go to the next line. Here, so it's kind of about the format and the negotiation of how do we talk back and forth about that is uh, uh, in addition to being about how it gets encoded. So we're not worried about the encoding part right now. Here, uh, we're worried about the encoding of how do we encode the message? Like what, how do we know what bits make what letter? How do we know how to go to the next line? How do we know to go to the next page and so forth? So to make that a little more concrete, let's look at this example here. We've got two prisoners in these jail cells and all they have is a pipe that connects between them. And they found that they could write letters on pipes or symbols on pipes, or on the, on the pipe, on a, a rock, and they could push it into that pipe and it would pop out the other end. And this guy just got a, a scroll that pardons him. This guy over here is unhappy because he doesn't have a pardon. He's got a blank uh, scroll right now. And he wants to make a duplicate of that so he can get out too. But he needs to tell him somehow what the contents of this look like, including how it's laid out, what it's on what page, what letters are where, where the line breaks, and so forth. He needs to be able to tell him that. And so it's more than just saying, here are the letters. You have to know where does it go to the next line. You have to know how, like, where does it go to the next, where are there spaces between the lines. You have to know more than just, here's the words. There's more to this document than just the words. Also, he has, this guy has to know when it's done. When, when was it the end of it? We have to wait, have a way to tell him that. We have to know when it starts. He has to maybe uh, sometimes tell him to hold off the, the jailer's coming. There needs to be a way to say, hold on a second and have him wait and stop dropping things through. So there needs to be more that goes back and forth than just the, the graphical characters of the letters that allow this uh, to be transferred. So let's take a look at what we need. So it's clear that we do need the graphical character, meaning letters, digits, punctuation, even space counts as a, uh, a graphical character. And other symbols, parentheses, maybe plus signs, uh, percent sign, dollar signs, all, all of those uh, operators and things like that. We'll need those. But we also might need to encode other things that aren't necessarily graphical. So the question is, is there a need for symbols that aren't just pictures that don't just show up? And the answer to that, based on what I said earlier, is yes, we need some things to be able to negotiate the communication itself. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Uh, here's the stuff, this is, I'm done now, okay, I got it, uh, or I got that, I didn't get that. So there need to be some other symbols that aren't necessarily part of the document, but manage the flow of information. Hold on a second, okay, go ahead. Uh, and so we need those other symbols. So we need more than just uh, visual characters. We need to encode other kinds of things beside that. And that's what we're going to look at today. And that's what this information encoding is. It's not about modulating things on a wire. It's not about uh, using Manchester encoding or something. This is more higher level. Than this. this is about what kinds of messages do we need to get information through. And what we're going to look at today is uh, probably the most common system. We've all used it and encountered it. Um, but we're going to look at that. But the things that we need to encode are obviously the graphical characters. We talked about those. Letters, digits, punctuation, operators parentheses, square brackets, quotation marks, things like that, hyphens. Um, but we also need formatting characters like new line, uh, a tab to tab over, 
a new page, carriage return, things like that. Uh, error accommodation characters, so things like backspace, oh, I messed up, go back or delete something that was there previously. Uh, logical controls, when to start, when to stop, which is the message, which, how do I cancel the message, how do I know when I'm done with the message. Uh, we might also need, we mentioned flow control, hold on, go ahead, meaning a way to pause and resume. And we also might need to control some physical aspect of the process in some way. And you might note that uh, that we need to have a lot of those things to facilitate the communication that aren't necessarily part of the message. They're needed to convey the message or they're needed for the process of conveying the message. And they don't have graphical pictures at all. Like what's a graphical picture for uh, I'm done look like? You don't want to write that I'm done down. You need to treat that as part of the stuff that frames the uh, message or controls the flow of the communication. So all of that um, is for encoding the source or the, the, the process, not necessarily uh, and controlling that at a higher level than how the things get encoded on the channel, put on the wire, put on the uh, as bits on some sort of modulation scheme. Now the code that we're gonna look at is one that I'm sure everybody in here has seen and experienced and done things with. Uh, the code we're gonna look at today is ASCII. And what ASCII stands for is the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. And you'll notice that right there in its name, Information Interchange, ASCII was a code that a lot of people, when they first talk about ASCII, they think about, they think, oh, it's just what character goes with what bit pattern. But it's much more than that. It was designed to communicate information. That's what it was designed for. So ASCII does include graphical characters, but it also includes characters for all those other things we talked about. We're going to look at some of those in detail uh, here today. So let's take a quick look at that. So first off, the graphical characters, it's got digits uh, or characters for digits, punctuation symbols, both uppercase and lowercase letters. Uh, space actually counts as a graphical character. But one interesting thing about the uh, characters, you notice if you look at a capital A, it's a 41 or a 65 in decimal, 41 hex. It looks like this bit pattern. A lowercase a is the same bit pattern except that uh, bit there is a 1 instead of a 0. Notice that's the only difference. And you also notice control A is like the same as an A but with this bit cleared. So notice the difference between pressing the shift key down, adds that bit, uh, or this bit is zero, shift key not down, has that bit as one, and the control key down clears both of these bits uh, like that. And that was by design, so notice B is just one more than A, but it follows that same pattern. And that's true for control C, lowercase c, uppercase c, control D, and so forth. So you can access all of those control characters, these character 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so forth, so by just control and then that same letter. And that's by design. Uh, there are other graphical characters as well. Digits uh, are in there. The, all of the other uh, graphical things like equal signs and forward slashes and backslashes and semicolons and colons, all of that stuff uh, counts as a graphical character. Now the non-graphical characters or codes, those can be grouped uh, by function. So let's take a look at some of those. So first set here is the uh, physical device controls. And these control something physical about the process. So if you were thinking about that uh, um, inmate in the cell, this would be moving the pen somewhere else on the page or something like that. And the ones that are available in ASCII are carriage return, meaning go back to the beginning of a line, horizontal tab, tabs over to the next tab stop, Notice it doesn't define how big that tab stop is. It just says Garrett says move to the next one. Vertical tab, uh, tabs downwards. Line feed goes to the next line. Form feed goes to the next page. Backspace goes back one character. Beep bell doesn't actually make anything show up or control anything. It just rings a bell, ding. And this was a leftover from the old days when uh, you'd have some teletype sitting there when ASCII was originally created and it would go bing whenever it was done with the document so somebody would know to pull it off of the machine. Or it might bing, make a ding noise to get the attention of some operator to come over and look at it. Um, and then there are these generic device controls, DC 1, 2, 3, and 4, and those were not defined specifically what they did, but they were there in case some system needed to have some device control like 
instead of ringing a bell, maybe turning on some part of it or uh, activating something uh, that was part of the machine. But these were designed to be used, and there are four of them. So these codes were kind of designed to be used for whatever thing was not thought of in any of these things here. So uh, DC1 and DC3 are, are sometimes used for what's called handshaking signals for communication, uh, meaning DC1 is Exxon, meaning go ahead and send me stuff. DC3 is used for hold on a second. So those, since that was something that we needed, DC1 and 3 being these generic physical device controls can be used for that, and they often are. If you ever are on a system and it says it supports X on, X off handshaking, uh, if it's using these characters, sending these characters to me, I'm ready or hold on, depending on if it's one or three. Okay, there are also what are called logical communication controls, and those deal with formatting uh, the message in some way or asking a question and getting an answer in some way. So if you look at this, SOH is start of header. That's character one or control A. Uh, start of text, STX, is, the, in other words, you might have a header that in between SOH and STX, it describes something about uh, the document that's coming. So you say SOH, there's some stuff that's not necessarily part of the document, but it's describing something about maybe the size, the number of pages you're gonna need, the number of characters it's going to be. Um, it's really not, that part's not defined, but there is a character saying this is where the header starts, and then STX says this is where the text starts. Now, interestingly, STX also indicates the end of the header. So there is no EOH because the start of text indicates that's the end of the header portion. And then, after, then between STX and ETX, you have the text of the message, and then ETX would end uh, that text. And then EOT means we're, we're completely done with our conversation. End of transmission. Now, one interesting thing is you might wonder why, if, uh, or if you use a system where you press Control C to break that system to stop it from running, uh, like you have a program that's running in Python, you can do Control C, it'll break it, it'll stop it from running. And it was Control C was chosen because it means end of text. It's a leftover from Unix systems where Control C would be, I'm done with this communication, that's the end of the text. And also, Control D is used in Unix systems to uh, to can't kill a process or cancel it. So control C would break out of what you're doing right now. Control D would cancel the entire thing or end the entire thing. And that's because that was end of transmission as an ASCII character. So just as an aside, you might wonder why they pick control C, why they pick control D for break and terminate. And this is why uh, they already had a meeting similar to that. Now, we also said there, uh, might be a need to ask a question. There's an ENQ character that's an inquiry saying, hey, are you there? And then that can be acknowledged with a yes or a no, or an acknowledge or a negative acknowledge, or an ACK or a NAC. And so there are built-in messages that are encoded to say yes or no, and to ask a question and say, hey, did you get that? Are you there? Are you ready? Whatever, it's got a way to inquire and a way to acknowledge in a positive way or a negative way. There's also this data link escape, uh, this DLE, um, that is intended to be used, uh, and actually I have these backwards, let me fix that real quick. That's intended to be used between a uh, STX and ETX block to insert other kinds of information in there. So it should be there. And the, there's also the synchronous idle SYN character. That's for a system that's synchronous where there's a clock and it always has to be sending something. It'll send that when it's idle as a way of saying, I'm here, but I'm not sending you any data. So this is like, I'm here, here's this idle, here's this idle, here's this idle, I'm idle, I'm idle, I'm idle, I'm not doing anything, I'm idle, I'm idle, I'm idle. And then here comes some data, start of header, header data, start of text, text, ETX, EOT. I'm done with that transmission, go back to synchronous idle. There's also this end of transmission block, uh, or ETB, which is used for blocked uh, transfers. It was designed for use in that. So that one uh, can be interesting uh, as well. Now, a lot of these aren't particularly used anymore, but it's interesting to note that they are in there to control this exchange of information um, and have been for a long time. Those are still the codes that are in there today. All right, the last uh, couple things uh, here that we're going to look at um, with the device controls are physical communication controls. And you'll notice we have the null character, which is all zeros. We have the delete character, which is 7F. And I should point out here that ASCII was originally a 7-bit code, not 8. 
Um, and that's why this is 7f, that's all of them ones. And you'll notice that null is all of them zeros. There's also a cancel, which is used to say if you start a transmission, you can send that cancel byte and then have it end. And then there's an end of medium, a substitute, uh, which is used to replace a previous character that was sent. Like if the guy put a, a stone in the pipe and he's like, oh, that was the wrong letter, he might send a substitute uh, and then send another one. And then the guy on the other end would say, oh, this is a substitute. So that previous one, I'll not write that down. I'll write the next one down. An end of medium is used for paper tapes. Now, a question comes up, why is null all zeros or seven zeros? Should be seven, I think I have eight there. Or there are eight, but the, ignore the first one. It's a seven bit code. And then why is delete all ones? And the answer to that, you'll notice that delete is off by itself as the only one of the ASCII characters that's at the end of the group, or control characters that's at, at the end. Why is that? The answer comes down to ASCII was originally a seven bit code used paper tape. Ze all zeros means tape that hasn't been punched at all. That's why it's null. It means nothing. There's nothing there. It's all zeros. Nothing's been punched. There's no pattern on the tape. It's blank. And all ones, seven ones, like you see there in the highlighted blue area, is all of the holes have been punched out. And the reason why that's delete is that was you could punch out any symbol that was on the tape and get rid of it by punching over it. So this sequence of symbols here, we could just punch over that. So the idea was you could always punch out over the top of a thing that already existed, but you couldn't glue holes back in easily. So they made delete all the way at the end with all ones because that means holes throughout the entire tape. So here's a case where something has been deleted right there. All right, we also have uh, some ASCII information separators. And those were designed that since some of the stuff that's being sent in ASCII requires us to uh, have records stored on tape, for example, like maybe hospital records, or grade records, or things like that, they designed and built into the thing a way to make a hierarchy for storing those. So they have file separators that would exist between one file and the next file. They would have a group separator that would exist between a group of records within a file and the next group a record separator, one record and the next one, and then a unit separator, which would be between individual uh, units within the file. And these aren't, what's between these or around these isn't really defined, it's just these are supposed to be used hierarchically and they exist if you want to divide up uh, code that way. Yeah, so think of it like comma delimited, uh, but you have, instead of just commas, we've got four different levels of character we could use to separate things into uh, progressively smaller units. ASCII also has some codes for uh, extensibility, meaning extension. Uh, there's shift out. Shift out allows us to shift through other character sets uh, that might be defined. Shift in allows us to go back to ASCII again. So you could shift out to one character set. You could shift out again to go to the next one, shift out again to go to another one, and then shift in back to ASCII again. So these were uh, ways that it was designed to be extended. But also the one that's more commonly used is escape. And we tend to think of escape now as you hit the escape key to get out of a program. But that's not what escape was originally designed for. Escape was designed to say this next stuff that's coming up, don't interpret it as literal ASCII, like uh, the thing that's going to be typed, treat it as some other system. So it's a way to temporary, temporarily leave ASCII to do something else. So ASCII was designed to... Uh, be extended, and what kinds of things would it be? Would it need to be extended for? Well, notice there's nothing that we. This is all of the control codes that we covered so far. Actually, all of the codes, if you count the graphical ones, you'll notice that there wasn't anything for changing the color or the font, making it bold, making it underline. Uh, there's also nothing for clearing the screen or setting the screen location, other than space, backspace, tab, vertical tab, uh, form feed, line feed. So screen location control wasn't included. So how can these additional features be supported? Well, we can use those ASCII escape sequences. So we, if we start something with escape and we've defined some other system, we can do that. And there are a lot of systems uh, that define extensions to ASCII using escape sequences. The most common one that you'll see is ANSI uh, escape sequences, which are available on the PC and Unix systems. There's also terminal escape sequences that are defined, like VT. There's a company called Vax that used to make Vax terminals that were used in industry and hospitals and all over the place. 
uh, and they designed their own kind of escape sequences that allowed you to control things like screen position. Uh, there were even some that allowed you to do or, uh, escape sequences that would do graphics uh, things. Uh, you could also then use markup languages, which are kind of a way of doing additional things above and beyond just the ASCII code itself. And we're not going to get too much into HTML and CSS right now, but let's take a quick look at these ANSI escape sequences. So ANSI escape sequences, the way those work, is they allow us to add uh, additional uh, controls right in the embedded into the text to do things like clear the screen. So what does that look like in the ANSI escape sequence? Right there in the ASCII text, you can have an escape character, a left bracket, two capital J, that would clear the screen. You could also set the cursor position to line 10, column 10, escape, left bracket. So the escape left bracket is part of the ANSI escape sequences that set some sort of a um, visual control of some sort or enter a control code. So escape left bracket 10 semicolon 10 capital H. That says set the cursor position to line 10, column 10. Escape left bracket 31M sets the foreground color to red. The escape left bracket 31 semicolon 1 sets it to red and sets it to bold. And then escape left bracket 30 semicolon 40M sets black text on a black background. You might say, well, why would you ever want that? Well, maybe you're entering your password and you don't want it to show up. Uh, on the screen. So your program sets black text, black background, and then people can't see uh, what you're typing because it doesn't show up. And those ANSI escape sequences are how a console program can control for font colors and cursor positions. And I guarantee everybody in here is, uh, well, at least hopefully has seen that in action. Here are some examples um, of uh, a Linux program uh, that's showing the CPU usage, the memory usage, the number of tasks that are running. And notice that it's all formatted nicely. And this is actually a, a Unix program that lets you look at all of these different things like a console. So it's kind of a graphical feel to it, but it's all done with uh, text mode stuff. Also, if you've ever been on a Linux machine or a Unix machine in the console and you do like a, uh, for example, here's getting a directory listing, you'll notice that uh, it sh it's showing us this list of things and notice the color coding involved here. Which things are executable files, which things have what permissions. Uh, the, it, the stuff is shown in different colors. And then over here is this kind of free DOS uh, program over here for setting up that. And notice it even has things that like buttons you can click on, um, windows that have scroll bars. This is all created with uh, just ANSI escape sequences drawing this stuff out. And so uh, if you've ever seen a, uh, a Linux console with colors that show up in it or a PC text mode application, you've probably encountered ANSI uh, escape sequences in action. Uh, the 3D printer that I used to have, when you'd power it up, it would uh, control the little LCD screen using ANSI escape sequences. So it would clear, how do you clear the screen of that? Escape left bracket to capital J clears the screen. And they actually had a bug in their code that when you power that thing up the first time, it would actually say escape left bracket two J on the uh, power up screen before it eventually cleared the screen and showed the right thing. Um, but note that you could write your own programs that are text mode in a console like hello world, but have the hello be red and the world be uh, green or something like that. Merry Christmas. So it's still a console application, but has colors and you can do that with these ANSI escape sequences, but they always start with an escape and then, have the sequence that ANSI defines to do that. And if you're interested in that, uh, go to Wikipedia, uh, look up ANSI escape sequences or whatever it's under, and you can read through all the different things. There's actually weird uh, codes in there too that let you substitute things or change the keyboard layout around. So when you press an A, you get a different key. Uh, you can almost like creating keyboard macros that do things. Um, and you can set up a, a program that would normally just be boring white on black text in a console, make certain things, error show up in red, uh, success show up in green. You can do that with ANSI escape sequences by just embedding these things into the stream of text. Okay, so that's a relatively short lecture today. That's all I'm gonna cover today. Uh, work on those labs. One thing I do wanna announce though is look for the uh, message to be posted in an email describing the uh, Midterm. The midterm is going to be ha is going to happen after uh, spring break, 
Um, and I'm going to post a study guide for that that will show up on the, uh, the course page. So make sure to look at that. And the midterm will be held in person on paper. So you're going to need to show up in the classroom, take it on paper, uh, fill out the stuff. Uh, so make sure you're ready for that following spring break. Um, and uh, I'll look for the email and the posting on the course page. Uh, for the details for that, and also watch out for the uh, study guide uh, that will be posted for that. So that's it for today. Everybody stay safe. Uh, and if you're struggling with your labs, let me know. Uh, you should be working on that wireless lab and getting that done, getting those things to communicate wirelessly. Uh, and you should be working on your uh, self-clocking codes uh, lab and getting that done. If you're struggling and need help, let me know. Um, that's what I'm here for. Send me an email, shoot me a text message. We'll set up a Zoom if we need to, uh, or I can come down and help you uh, in my office if you need me to. Bye.